What is very interesting, I think, about architecture, and I tell this to people, you know, it's possible to be in some other profession, to be a scientist or to be, I don't know what, even a doctor or, or I don't know what, uh, many, many other professions. But an architect has one unique thing about it, which is that architects look reality in the face. Because, you know, the client for which the building is being built is that reality. It is it's a representation of a power of some kind or other, you know, that is looking at you directly, so to speak. So architects have this, you know, the, the business of designing buildings and getting them built is a kind of direct uh, engagement with power, you know, either the private individual's wealth or the, or the corporation or the state or whatever. Yes, I mean, you know, in a way, architecture has always been a luxury uh, profession. You know, it's never been, um, <clears throat> you know, unlike, let's say, I don't know what, uh, uh, fashion design, let's say, for that matter, would be more, you know, universally understood. Or even that, of course, is a luxury item as well, you know, very much so. And, uh, um, and, and also one of the sobering facts is, and I think it's been a, a fact for a long time, that like, um, well over 90%, you know, maybe 95% of the built production in the United States has had no architect involved in its design at all. So it's been designed by builders or by engineers or by somebody else, but not by architects. So in that sense, it's always been a kind of minority, you know. The profession, I think, really takes off in the 17th century. And that's interesting in itself, because if we, if we take France in particular, you know, and the French Academy, you know, it is the modernization of France in the 17th century which produces the profession of architecture because the Royal Academy in France uh, trained the architects who had only one task in France under Louis XIV, which was to design and supervise the construction of the buildings of the state. They were not really trained for, you know, as, as free professionals. They were trained to accommodate and represent the state, basically. So I, th I think architecture really starts to come in, into its own in a modern sense with this idea of the nation state and the representation of the state, you know, and, of, and the institutions of the state, you know. I mean, one of the kind of, uh, now perhaps slightly passé, but one of the uh, ideological uh, manifestations of recent years with regard to the uh, computer and with regard to digital, you know, computer-aided design, you know, uh, has been, you know, kind of rather simple-minded analogies between, let's say, uh, technological inventions of the 19th century, like uh, steel frame construction, the invention of the elevator, uh, reinforced concrete construction, you know, and, and the impact that these technologies and inventions had upon built form. And then, you know, I think in rather simple-minded terms, people were uh, saying, you know, well, the, the uh, digital and digital uh, computer-aided design will, will have a similar impact. And um, yes and no, I mean, up to a point it has had some impact and uh, um, it's been possible to conceive, you know, uh, buildings and to um, work them out in, 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 in detail, very complex space forms and structures, you know, which would not have been, um, would not have been possible uh, prior to um, computer-aided design. So there has been a certain, um, definitely a certain impact of this technology on design itself. You know. I think, um, you know, as always, of course, there is a romanticism of technology or of technique. And um, I think an interesting term used by someone who had a big influence on me, Thomas Maldonado, is the term techno-idolatry, you know. And I think, uh, to the extent that um, you know a certain hypermodernity has been associated with techno idolatry, you know, i.e., that the maximization of any technique is is desirable, you know, and that and and then, then we come to an interesting issue there. I think you know that you could say that maximization is a problem altogether, you know, that that maximization not only in architecture but in other fields is a problem, you know. Uh, maximization of the application of high-tech surgery, for example, or the maximization of the of the um, use of pharmaceuticals. You know, uh, this, you know the, this kind of maximization of technique is a problem elsewhere. You know, but also in in 
in architecture, or let's say artificial fertilizers as a maximization of you know, agricultural production. I mean, these, usually one has to pay a price for this maximization you know, in the long run. And, uh, um, and anyway, it's out of balance. I mean, ideally, you know, architecture should be involved with balance. You know? So, um, yes, by all means, I mean, the, 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 it's impossible to work without the computer. You know, you can't, the building industry is, everything has changed. You know, one has to computerize the information totally. And it has had many, many benefits, I think, in terms of the management of production and will continue to have. But, um, but you know, the, the intelligent use of the technique and, and, and uh, the, uh, you know, using a technology that's appropriate for the task, that's the issue, you know, rather than, uh, uh, you know, simply pushing for an image that's hot, you know, and which comes close to, in my opinion, techno-idolatry. Well, you know, modernity altogether is in a difficult situation. I think you could also say democracy is in a very difficult situation. Um, the speed of change altogether, you know, threatens all sorts of human institutions, you know, maybe not professions, maybe not the medical profession, let's say, which is so, you know, key to survival, for, for example. But, but um, many other professions, and also maybe more importantly, institutions, are in a state of crisis. I mean, I think democracy is in a state of crisis, you know. And um, the simple-minded belief in the modern project, that the modern project would always be progressive, you know, that it could only go onwards and upwards, you know, this notion, this very innocent notion, as, as is a little hard to sustain in this and has been hard to sustain for quite some time. I mean, I think there's a fundamental break. I mean, the, the fundamental break is, of course, Hiroshima. You know, from this point onwards, the modern project is never going to be the same because the possibility of uh, total annihilation is sort of sitting right there as a product of modern technology. You know, and although we most of the time don't think about it, it did not go away. It's sitting there, you know. And uh, that changes everything, I think, in terms of uh, the psychology of the society and so on. And, and I'm not saying that the crisis of democracy derives from that, but these things are interconnected, I think. You know, the, um, the modern project in the sense of a liberative modern project, politically, culturally and otherwise, is very much linked to the, to the aspirations of democracy. And to the extent that democracy is in trouble, uh, you know, this, this project is in trouble. It's another aspect of the same. Uh, and architecture, it is, is a symptom, in a way, of this condition, I think, in terms of its death throes, let's say. I don't believe it's a bit dramatic to talk in those terms, you know. But, for instance, as we are talking today, I mean, the, the Supreme Court just passed legislation yesterday which basically threatens American democracy, absolutely and fundamentally, because corporations can now spend whatever they like to get whoever, whoever they like elected, while well, the democratic principle is already in trouble, heavy trouble. So, the future of the profession, well, the profession goes on, of course, and in some ways, of course, there's more building being built uh, uh, worldwide, perhaps, than ever before. More, uh, also, there is this paradox that although there's an enormous amount of, of indifferent or bad or, or, or ill-informed construction all over the world, I mean, statistically, most of it, you know, but at the same time, there's also quality work being done all over the world, you know, um, not on the same scale, maybe, but still there is more than ever. I think you know part of that. I think is to do with the information age. You know that the 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 beneficial aspect of the information age has been that the uh, provincial architects, so-called provincial architects, all over the world, judge them, judge their own production by world standards. You know through the media, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So in fact, that has had a you know it's had a positive effect upon the profession, upon the quality of the architecture worldwide.